Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Tiffany, a retired librarian turned homeschool mom. And in this video, we're going to look at The People Shall Continue. This is a 40th anniversary edition by Simon J. Ortez and illustrated by Cheryl Grays. Both of these authors are, in fact, Native American. So, um, they're, as much as they most sound slightly English, they are both of them are Native American. The author is a member of the Acoma Pueblo tribe and he this is his only book for children he is part of a group uh, that's been called the Native American Renaissance which essentially they're trying to reawaken pride in the tribes and the old ways and remember and bring it to the rest of the country of the United States they're trying to spread their knowledge of the people, of their tribes, of their cultures to not only to uh, white people who are willing to listen, I'd be one of them, um, as well as other people of color and trying to unite in that sense to share their stories so they're not forgotten. So that's kind of what that seems to be and this is pretty modern. And Cheryl Graves is a part of the absentee Shawnee tribe. So she's a, a typical multimedia artist. So this book is, it looks like it's done, it's computer generated, but again, this is uh, graphic art, so it, it's hard work. And it's done very, very well. So this is the cover, it's a beautiful book. Fantastic illustrations, it's very, very poignant. This tells the story, essentially, the history of Native Americans in kind of both North and South America, specifically in the United States and how there were multiple tribes and they worked together most of the time. There were fights, there was hardships, but and there was some interaction with the, um, the people of Europe and possibly the people uh, of Asia, because it does mention people in the West. And then the conquistadors came and they were pillaging and de basically they pretty much destroyed everything because they were searching searching for riches and they wanted the natives as slaves and then the English came and the French came and the Dutch came and they fought and they stole and they took the land of the people and they pushed them west to the reservations and then then they discovered precious minerals you know the gold rushes and the silver rushes and they came and the reservations were shrunk and the treaties were broken and or just disregarded and that's the case of Oklahoma we'll go there uh, in a minute but and then rather than talking about the darkness because the people were poor and they still are I mean there are reservations everywhere that they have some of the highest poverty rates in the United States and it's sad they don't have work, they're starving, they're in land that's not fertile, that they can't use. Some of them, particularly where I live, in the American Southwest, they've started basically uh, catering to white people's greed and using it against them uh, by the opening of casinos. So, which you can't really blame them, I mean, this is what they got. They can gamble on their lands because it's their land. So all, more power to them in this case. The, the white people's greed took things from them. Now they take advantage of it. Don't blame them. But uh, they're, still, they're still poor. But it also talks, this book, when I read the description, I think one of the people who wrote a review said they taught mostly Native Americans. And this book gives them hope because that's the point of the end of the book. The end of the book after going through all of this and how the people were poor and they're starving and they lost their culture. It talks about the Indian schools, how the kids were stolen and made into Christians and brought away from their homes and their families and made to forget and be ashamed of who they are. But then they've come back and that's kind of what the author is. He's um, there's a, a note, um, apparently it was a story originally published in 77, 
So, and essentially, they're, it talks about the history and how they're coming back. They're, this is how it ends. It ends with hope. It's like we real, they realized there are other people that are willing to listen to our stories, to our culture, to remember so we can survive. And they saw the other peoples of the color, other peoples of color, the Asians and the African Americans and the poor white people who they could communicate with. They had things in common with. And yeah, here, this is the picture where they're talking about this. And the Latino people, the poor people, the people who were willing to listen, and they shared their history with them. And it's kind of, it's revived a native, the native culture, the native pride in their tribes and to bring them back to life. Now in the United States, when it comes to the Indian schools, it is illegal. It is a federal law, they cannot take the kids. Apparently I've been reading a few things in Canada, they still do, so it's kind of sad. But in the United States, it is illegal. It's been confirmed in the Supreme Court they have a specific law that was passed, or I think ordinance in the US, US Supreme Court, that bans uh, white people essentially from taking native children from their families. So essentially, most time native kids, if they don't have, they basically they're abandoned by their parents or their parents often die um, due to poverty and drug abuse and alcoholism because poverty. Uh, there's, I'm assuming they stay with the tribe. They cannot be adopted outside of the tribe under normal circumstances, particularly if they're born on tribal lands and registered as a member of the tribe, of a specific tribe. So, and I talk about a little bit more about what's going on with the tribes when, um, on Friday, where I talk about the Smithsonian's Museum of the American Indian and they have uh, an exhibition that there's a photo uh, part of it that talks about some of this. But this is an amazing book. It's very hopeful. It tells the story in a very simple way, in a very poetic way that's easy to understand for all children that this is what happened. It keeps it simple, but it doesn't sugarcoat it. It makes it clear that the people were here. They were living mostly in harmony. They were doing these things. And the white people came and destroyed everything and stole everything and lied. And it does not sugarcoat that, which is a good thing, even for the little kids. It's extremely important to know that this is what happened. Members, at least um, of my ancestry, at least some of it, not all of it. I can say that, not all of it. Some of my ancestors are uh, my fa on my father's side, particularly his mother's side, uh, both his parents. His parents on his mother's side had nothing to do with this. They weren't in the United States at the time. United States at the time, uh, they came through Ellis Island later, and that goes the same for my paternal uh, grandfather's mother. Her family came directly from Germany. So, but my mother's side, they were from Iowa and Kentucky. So they were at least they benefited from this, which is sad. Whether they took part in it, I don't know. Um, I haven't gone back into my family history like that. Um, but they benefited from it. I, living in the American Southwest, benefit from land that was taken from the natives. In fact, there's a combined um, Native American tribe with maybe half an hour drive of me. Though, with comes to these guys, I don't have a, too much sympathy. Yes, they have their culture stolen, but they have a heck of a lot of opportunity. They're right next to a major city. <laughs> it's very close. They have the ability to go to, there, there literally is a community college on their land that they can go to for free. So, and then they have a giant casino or two. <laughs> so, but there are a lot of tribes that don't. There are a lot of tribes in our state that um, I'm in a state that has the Apache. And they are in the middle of nowhere. It's freaking cold up there a lot of the times. And they're impoverished. 
I believe they do have casinos a little bit, but again, they're very much up in the middle of nowhere. So it's sad. Their lands were taken. Their way, people's way of life was stolen from them for greed and another country and their, um, you know, the excuse of, we're doing this because we're God's chosen people. No, no, you're not. You're just irritating and you're destroying people because that's what colonialism does and this book covers this very very well as I rant on a soapbox about this and this covers this it doesn't again it doesn't sugarcoat it um, I can pull up some link for talks about the people so you have the white people who have come and it's not they eventually were beaten down enough to go onto the reservations and then it shows the taking of the children and it doesn't hide this and they were torn from their families and they had to move to cities in America. And they were suffered, and they suffered because they, they lost their culture, they lost their people. But they remembered. Slowly they began to remember and listen and remember their people. Um, I know from a former coworker that back east, the languages are dead. So, the, and I think some people are trying to recover them but the native languages are dead. Here out west, they're not. So some of the languages are being revived and brought back as much as possible. And it's important to those tribes that you speak their specific language. I think it's, it's important uh, with the Apache. I think it's, I don't know if it's important on the tribe that's um, near me. I have to ask my husband. He worked at their uh, public defense office when we first got married. So we are familiar with that the land again is there's a decent sized reservation within a half an hour drive of me and I'm not in the middle of nowhere so and again with this book it talks about how they came back how they started listening and they started talking they were a force they came together they started speaking to the black people the Latino people the Asian people and the white people and many white people who we do listen and who were others who were kept poor from the wealth of America and they're coming together um, in one of the exhibitions there um, some of the photographs show in New Mexico members of the Apache tribe because the Apache reservation is partially in New Mexico as well as both Arizona and Utah that they were participating in some of the Black Lives Matter protests because this is disenfranchised people and they're all disenfranchised people. So this story ends with hope. That's, I think, one of the biggest points and kind of makes this different from other histories because it ends with hope saying, no, we're not gone. We're going to come back. We're going to be strong again. We're going to fight. We're going to, our stories are not going to be lost. And I think that's important. I think that's an important message that the author and in part the illustrator are bringing forth that we're not, we're going to hold fast to our old traditions and we're going to revive them and we're not going to let them be forgotten. So this is a great book. This is nonfiction. Um, let me kind of wrap this up. Highly recommend it. If you want to go over the history, again, even for little kids, it does not sugarcoat it, which makes me very, very happy. It should not be sugarcoated. What happened, happened. It was bloody. It was horrible. And things need to be done to fix it. And kind of in some places, and I'll talk about, I mentioned this, uh, some people aren't aware. The Supreme Court one recently ruled that the taking of the land in, around Oklahoma was not legal. So technically the Native American reservation now encompasses Tulsa, Oklahoma. Now, from what I'm talking, when I've talked to my husband about this, because he's covered this case, he does uh, legal education. And what they suspect is going to happen, essentially all the Native Americans are going to do is they're going to take possession of their people. So if a Native person gets pulled over for drunk, drunk driving, basically he's just turned over to the tribal police and they take care of it. And that's pretty much to the extent of what they're going to do. Basically, they're just going to take responsibility for their own people and that's probably going to be the extent of it i don't think they're my husband doesn't think they're going to push just because it would cause problems in legal fights 
So that's kind of what's going on in Oklahoma. So they're they're getting some power back. And as I said, the casinos. I mean, as much as people hate gambling, and I certainly I don't gamble. I have no interest in it. But it's feeding on the wealth and power of white people that took their land and they're taking some of their power back. I mean, the tribe that's near us, not only do they run a couple of casinos, they have a huge entertainment district. And that's, they have at least some of their elders, they have a decent amount of wealth and there's still a lot of problems because of the reservation system. But things are going, things can get better. They have the ability to get better at least for this specific tribe, or actually it's a combination of two tribes. So, but things have the possibility to get better. And again, I love this book because it it gives hope. It gives hope to a large number of nations and people that have been scattered and almost destroyed that there is hope that their cultures aren't going to disappear which I think is important. So that is this book. Again, The People Shall Continue. It's a, I have a 40th anniversary edition by Simon or J. Ortez and illustrated by Cheryl Graves. Um, again, I'll say where they come from. He is a member of the uh, Acoma Pueblo tribe and she is a member of the Absentee Shawnee tribe. So those are the authors and the illustrator of this extremely beautifully done, well-written book. So. That's it for this review. I'm covering um, some stuff from the Museum of the uh, American Indian through the Smithsonian. That's what's going to be going on on Fridays in this in November, as well as a couple other children's books that are native, written by Native Americans about Native Americans. And I made sure of that that all of these books were written by Native Americans. So I'm not. So they're not. Somebody isn't trying to imper- interpret somebody else's culture. So, and that's what's going on throughout November. So we have the books on Monday and then these, this look at some of these Smithsonian resources from the Museum of the American Indian, which I think there's two locations, one in DC and one in New York. I'm assuming that's New York City. So that is it for this review. I have a whole bunch of Halloween stuff. If you want to check that out from October, some spooky stuff, some book stuff. I covered some uh, classic horror classics and some, well, some kids spooky stuff. I have a bunch of other reviews that I've done before I covered all of Harry Potter, both the books and the films, and some other reviews, a sprinkling of travel stuff, some sprinkling of secular homeschool stuff. Coming December, it's all fun. I'm covering basically secular Christmas books that are just fun, like The Grinch Stole Christmas and covering the films and stuff. In January, I'm looking at food and looking at recipes and a few other things. And in January, I'm covering both African-American history and Asian-American history. So both of those are coming in February. So if you would like to see more of this, like and subscribe. Thank you.